Japan's unique oceanic delight, Hamachi. You know, this fish is, is wild caught and then killed Ikejime style, so it's absolutely perfect. It couldn't be any better. If you get a great hamachi collar that's nice and fatty, you could just cook it slowly on the grill, finish it in the oven, and do the exact same thing, and I guarantee you'll be happy. It's just a delicious, delicious preparation. Hi, my name is Michael Simrusti. We're here at Providence Restaurant in Los Angeles, California, and we're here today to talk about one of my favorite fish, which is wild Japanese hamachi. So today we're going to do a dish uh, using this Japanese hamachi with uh, seltus and shiso. Before I take the skin off, I'm going to separate it into a couple of different pieces. First, I'm going to take off this belly portion right here, which is really, for many people, the most prized part of the fish. It's got the uh, highest fat content of this fish. It's very, very favored. Uh, but then the rest of this fish is also amazing. And so first, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the skin from it. So I'll take just a little portion of the tail off like that to expose the skin underneath and slide my knife under and just run it all the way down like that. It should be a little bit difficult to come off it shouldn't come off too easy. If it comes off too easy, you're probably cutting into the flesh of the fish. But what you want to do when you remove the skin is leave all of that behind, which is like the fat that exists between the skin of the fish and the flesh of the fish. It's really, uh, you know, the very, one of the very best parts of this fish. Before we prepare the fish, what we like to do is season the fish with sea salt uh, on all sides, and we let it sit for about 12 minutes. And after 12 minutes, we'll rinse the sea salt off, and this helps to bring out the natural flavor of the fish. And the other thing that we do is we rest the fish always on sheets of kombu, like this. So, uh, you know, kombu, obviously seaweed, a very big, uh, very big part of uh, Japanese cuisine. Uh, but, you know, I like to use it too here at the restaurant. It, it amplifies the flavor of the fish and brings out the umami that exists in the fish. The last thing we have to do before we can cut it for sashimi is just score it, which takes a couple of minutes to do it properly, but you score it all the way down just to make it a little bit more tender. So now, once we have it cut like that, then we will uh, salt the fish. So I'm using a sea salt here, and you season pretty liberally because we're just seasoning the exterior uh, of, the, of the flesh, obviously, and then we just need to let the fish sit for about 12 minutes. So the next thing we're gonna do in order to prepare the sashimi uh, is a um, slice of fish. And we're gonna lay it out one more time on sheets of kombu just until we're ready to put it on the plate. I always like to start out by just taking a slice for myself. It's absolutely delicious, fatty, buttery, flavor of mineral, it's just delicious. So we'll take nice uh, thin slices of the fish and lay them out on the, on the kombu. This process in, in um, Japanese, they call kombu jime. Um, and it's a, it's a technique that, that chefs often use with, um, with um, different types of sashimi fish just to bring out their natural flavor. Honestly, I mean, the knife is sharp and I have a lot of practice cutting sashimi, but it cuts like butter because there's so much fat in the fish. It's just absolutely beautiful. Okay, so the next step in the process in making this dish is to season the fish to get it ready for the plate. So uh, a little bit more sea salt. We just season each piece a little bit. 
Uh, we're gonna season with a little bit of lime zest right here. So we have this rasp, takes off just the outer, the very outer skin of the lime. It's incredibly fragrant. And then a little bamboo brush. Just lime zest now all over the fish. I'm gonna season with just a little bit of uh, Australian finger lime as well. Do these little cells of lime uh, and they bring uh, little bursts of flavor. They pop in your mouth, mouth like uh, caviar. Um, and then there's just wonderful flavor that really complements the fattiness of the fish. And then I'm gonna put a couple of these little pieces of uh, shiso, which is a great green herb that just, its flavor is just really wonderful, almost a little bit minty in its flavor. So the next step is just to roll the fish up into a sort of rose almost like that. And now we're gonna make the dressing for the dish. <clears throat> so this is a uh, wasabi creme fraiche. It's very simple, uh, you know, creme fraiche, something you can buy anywhere. You could also substitute with uh, sour cream if you like. And then um, fresh grated wasabi. If not, I suppose you could use powdered wasabi. We always use fresh, uh, just cause it has such a superior flavor. And then just mix it into the creme fraiche along with a little salt and a little lemon juice until you have the desired flavor. And we'll put that down in our dish. Just like that. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to add a layer of seltus all around the hamachi. So seltus is a great vegetable that, um, that I'm very fond of, grown here in Southern California, that has uh, just this absolutely incredible flavor. We blanch it in very salted water um, so that it takes on some really good flavor. And then we lightly pickle it. Okay, so in order to finish the dish, I just have to get this whole thing in there. So let's all say a prayer that it holds together for us. And just drop it there in the middle of the dressing. And that's it, the dish is done. All right, so there's our dish, our completed dish, wild Japanese hamachi with seltus and wasabi creme fraiche. Uh, I wanna thank you all very much for joining me here in the kitchen at Providence today. I'm very proud to be a part of this promotion for Japanese hamachi. It's absolutely one of my favorite fish. Thank you so much.